of us have pondered the meaning of death. What is its place in God's great plan of the ages? Is death a reality, or is it merely the gateway into another life, either more happy or less happy than our present life? What answers to these questions have you found in your study? In this program, we present some of the experiences of an earnest Christian and church worker as he seeks more satisfying answers for those who fear death. He discovers that the Bible alone contains the only true message of comfort. And now, on with the program. More toast? No, thanks. Are you feeling all right? Are you feeling all right? Sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. It's just that I'm calling on a young boy today. Just a youngster, and he's near death. And then I visit a Spanish-American lady who's seriously ill. You know, it bothers me. When I try to comfort somebody in a situation approaching death, I... My words seem so shallow. On Christian morality, I'm okay, but when I look into a person's eyes when I talk about death, I feel like an imposter. Are you implying that you don't believe the things you say? No, I believe. It's just that in this area, I don't feel the same certainty. Dad, hmm? do the trees die in the winter time? No, dear, they just sort of go to sleep. But the leaves die. Well, yes, they do, but the, the main part, the trunk, the branches, well, they sort of sleep, and when springtime comes, they awaken. Well, what makes the trees have a new life? God. Well, why doesn't God let the trees go on living? Carol, we don't have answers for all the things that God does. Sometimes God allows things to happen just to cause us to ask questions, like you're asking now. And sometimes he does things which give us clues to those answers. Well, why doesn't God come right up and tell us what he means? Well, because he knows that we wouldn't learn as well that way. Suppose in school your arithmetic teacher gave you all the answers. Now, would that be a better way of learning than if she asked you the questions and made you find the answers for yourself? Sure would. <laughs> Mom, can I be excused now? I have to get my books together. You're excused. Bye, dear. Bye. You barely got through that one. Well, I better get started, too. I want to make a stop at the toy store. Bye, dear. Bye, dear. cycle of war, the fashions changing, the costumes changing, but always the same product, war, destruction, death. It's as though man were always focused on his ultimate and inescapable fate, to die, to destroy himself or just to live long enough until he is destroyed by the forces of life. May hide from these tragic implications and playing the games of life. He plays house, doctor, all those games that one day will become real. He plays travel, floating and sailing away. But where can he go? Where can he escape to? He's like a puppet dangled by the strings of his fate, some of his own choosing and 
some over which he seems to have no control. He builds buildings. He tries to speed faster, faster. He attempts to fly off the skin of the earth. But always, he returns to the earth. It was nice of you to come. I wanted to come. Where's Billy? In his bedroom. Can he hear us? No. What's the doctor say? Just a few months. Perhaps a little longer. Oh, the poor child. He doesn't know, of course. Well, that's the terrible thing. Some way, we, we don't know just how. We think Billy has found out. Oh, no. How did he react? He cried for a long time. To a point, I guess, where there were no more tears, even for a child. That's why we thought you should talk to her. He needs your help. Perhaps you could make death seem a little less terrible by giving him some sort of hope. Some kind of strength. Or something he could put his trust in. Perhaps then his last days wouldn't be so filled with fear. I'll try. Can I see him now? Oh, one thing more. Billy's changed since you saw him last. He's become... older. He doesn't seem like a boy anymore. Hi, Billy. Oh. How are you today? Hello. Okay. Hey, you've got a beautiful view from your window. Billy, can you imagine what it would be like if you could just see all the way? What do you mean, all the way? Oh, if you could. See beyond the street, beyond the buildings. Even beyond the horizon. You know, where your eyes ordinarily go off into space and sky as the Earth is round. Can you imagine the things you could see if, if you could just keep on seeing? What? Uh, you see cities, lots of cities, oceans, mountains, deserts, jungles. That is, if you could just keep on seeing. But no one's eyes work that way. No, they don't. But we do know that if we travel the direction that our eyes go, we soon discover that all the things we know about beyond our vision, are really there. Why do you suppose God arranged it that way? What do you mean? Why did God give us limited vision? I don't know. Well, I think it must have been mighty important to him that there be lots of things that we just cannot see. Well, why doesn't God just let us see everything? Well, I think the reason is that he wants us to believe in things that we know are there, even though we can't see them. Did my mother ask you to come? Yes, she did. Why? She thought you might have some things you'd like to talk over. Do you? Billy, is there anything you'd like to talk about? You mean God? Why does God do things that people can't understand? Perhaps, as I said, he, he wants us to realize that things happen which our eyes cannot see and our minds cannot understand so that we can grow bigger, grow greater than we are. Billy? Yes? So you have a drawing pad? Yes. You draw me a picture? Well, I don't draw very well. Not for show, just for fun. Okay. What do you want me to draw? God. Huh? 
I don't know how. None of us has ever actually seen God, have we? But you do believe he exists, don't you? Oh, yes. I think so. But I don't understand the things he does. I know how you feel, Billy. But there are many things that we can't see, can't understand, until God helps us. And we all believe that we'll be together someday in paradise. Where is paradise? Paradise is where there's no suffering, no sickness. Hey. Wouldn't you like to be with God in paradise? I don't want to go to paradise. I want to stay here on earth. I want to play with the kids. I want to be with my mother and father. I want to stay right here on earth. I don't want to die. Billy, paradise is not something to fear. Then why don't you go there yourself if it's so good? Billy. Go on, go on. Hey, I stopped by the toy store today. I'll be delivering you a present pretty soon. through this gateway. Teach this to our children. They seem not to believe it. Where's the fault? Is this experience with this boy telling me that I've missed something very important? Come in. This is Rebella. My name is Thomas. From the church. assigned to your situation. I'm very pleased to report that the church committee has approved special funds for your assistance. Thank you. Why do you do this? Why do you give me money? We want to help people in need. Why? Well, because that's what God wants Christians to do. I don't believe in God. I know. But perhaps someday you will. God is... is love, Mrs. Rebella. Love. For you, maybe. There is a God. He has never had any love for me or my family. Well, sometimes we don't understand God's will, but I do know that he wants to help. You're making me sick. Sometimes that's God's way of teaching us. It's a lesson. You think God is trying to teach me a lesson? I don't know, but I... I do know that he listens when we ask for help. The only thing I would ask of him is that I had never been born. This is Rebello there. Once there was a man, a, a very good man, who believed in God. Believed as, just as firmly as you can imagine. 
And yet, when God filled that man's body with sickness and with pain beyond belief, that very man also wondered if, well, if it wouldn't have been better if he had died at birth. He said something. May I read it to you? Why died I not from the womb? For now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest with kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that have gold, who filled their houses with silver. There the wicked ceased from troubling, and there the weary are at rest. That man was Job. Have you ever heard of? Him? No. And you think now God wants to teach me a lesson? I don't know. If I should die still not believing in him, What will happen to me? That's very difficult to answer. You call that a God of love, a God of goodness. Yes, he is a God of love. That man named Job, when you read it, it sounded like he expected to find rest to be asleep in death. Now, why didn't God go on punishing him? Well, I believe that he felt that, that Job had proved his love for him. Are all the answers in that book? Yes. You've read the whole thing. understand the God that punishes children before they even know what sin is all about. Are you speaking of your own child? I'm speaking about myself. And now will you be taking the money back to the church since you know how I feel? No, Mrs. Rebella. Mrs. Rebello, I believe that you're an honest woman. Somehow, God's message to you has become distorted. And you've not seen him in his true image. Mrs. Rebello, all I ask is that you leave open even the, the smallest possibility that you've not seen God in his, his true image. Why do you smile? Have you done the same thing? Well, I'd, I'd be less than honest if I did not say that there are still things I don't understand. God has lessons for me too, Mrs. Rebello.
Come in, come in and sit down. Thank you. Well, it's been a long time, George. Yes, sir, the years go by. Then suddenly you remember them just like a motion picture you saw yesterday afternoon. I know. Tell me, do you ever think of your days in school? I often. As a matter of fact, I think it was your teaching that excited my imagination most. Thank you. How are things, George? Well, sir, there are good days and the bad days. Today, I guess, might be called one of the bad ones. Oh. All my life, I've talked to people about death. Today, I talk about death. The words were there. But suddenly, I realized I didn't understand them at all. It was as though I was reciting something and not even listening to what I was saying. Have you ever experienced that? Many times, George. You have? Oh, yes. You see, knowledge is never complete. It's always in a state of, of becoming. We always want to be able to see more and more clearly, to get into a subject more deeply. May I ask you a very personal question? Please do. Have you ever thought about your own death? In fact, I've had an idea about it for quite a time now that death may not be too far away for me. Are you afraid? Somewhat, I think. Born of uncertainty, I suppose. In all your years, have you ever met anyone who longed to die to be with Jesus? Or have they all resisted death, even though they believed in Jesus? They all resisted. True. If there's intense suffering, death can be looked upon as a, a release. Apart from that, People would prefer to live here on earth in health rather than go to heaven. Well, then there is something wrong with our image of what happens after death. If we believe that we pass immediately into paradise or into heaven, then how is it that our, our, our very nature shuns the idea of death? Well, George, there's, there's just one thing. You must find your own way. How? By reading the Bible. Well, read it again and again. And when I say read, I mean study. Because the Bible contains the light for which you are searching. Oh, um, Recently, a friend of mine gave me a very important little booklet. And it touches precisely on your present problems. Seems to prove its point by the Bible. Life after death. Well, George, you seem happier this morning than you did yesterday. I suppose you're glad to have those unpleasant calls behind you. Yes, I am, but for a different reason than you might think. Those calls, Betty, turned out to be very valuable experiences. How come? Well, through them, I've been led to a better understanding of death and just what our hope really is beyond the grave. I can hardly wait to get back to that sick boy and the Spanish mother. Well, I hope you won't be disappointed, but tell me more. Well, my old college professor gave me a little book, which he said a friend had given to him. I read it through last night in connection with my study of the Bible. You know, it called my attention to something that we all should have known. 
And that is that the Bible refers to death as being asleep. I checked carefully. The prophets of the Old Testament are all referred to as sleeping in death. The same is true for the disciples in the New Testament. The righteous and the wicked are all sleeping in death. Like the trees made in the wintertime. Well, yes, dear, very much like that. Especially in the fact that, like trees, there will be an awakening. Except with people, the awakening is not in the springtime. It'll be in the morning of a new day of human experience. The awakening is called the resurrection. Are you saying that our hope for life after death lies in the resurrection of the dead? Yes. Well, does that mean that nobody goes to heaven? <laughs> the faithful followers of Jesus are exalted to a heavenly home when they're raised from the dead. The remainder of mankind shall be awakened from death as humans right here on earth. It would seem then that dying is like falling asleep and the resurrection like getting up in the morning. And that way we can understand it. The Bible says that unless there is the resurrection of the dead, then those who have fallen asleep in death have perished. But the Bible also makes it plain that just as in Adam, all die. Even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. You see, Jesus took the sinner's place in death became the Redeemer and the Savior of the world. It seems reasonable the way you explain it. Well, life and the blessings of life in Earth's new day will reach the people through the agencies of Christ's kingdom. And Earth will become the paradise of God. Oh, how our little friend Billy will then rejoice. You know, all the joys of that new life will more than compensate for the hardships of the present. Mrs. Rebella will discover that too. And how she will then rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. Truly the Bible is a wonderful book. And friends, as a help in understanding the Bible, we would like to send you a free copy of the little book, Life After Death. It will give you a real hope for the future, both for yourself and for your friends. This little book helps to take away the fear of death. For based on the Bible, it gives assurance of a happy awakening and an eternity of joy beyond. To get your free copy of Life After Death, write to The Bible Answers. Simply ask for Life After Death, and the book will be mailed to you without obligation. And now until we see you again, goodbye and may God bless.